After you have opened GeoStudio and opened the workshop file that we're going to use here for illustrative purposes, and you are in the define mode, and this is what you should see. The first step in any analysis is to establish the in situ static stress state. The solution of can be very sensitive to static stress conditions. Consequently, this is a very important step. Generally, as always, the uh, dynamic analysis is only as good as the accuracy of the static in situ stresses. And as we step through this example, hopefully you will come to appreciate that one of the most important parts of a quake W analysis is to establish the static in situ stresses with considerable confidence. If you can't do that, then the rest of the quake W analysis becomes rather suspect. We can establish the quake and or the in situ stress state with a quake or a sigma type of special analysis called in situ. In this particular case, I'm going to use sigma here to establish the in situ stress state to illustrate the integration in GeoStudio. So the intent here is to establish the in situ stress state, and in order to do that, we need to say something about K naught conditions. And uh, to those of you who have been part of the Sigma presentations, we have noted that in GeoStudio, in Sigma, and Quake, you can control the K naught conditions either by specifying Poisson's ratio or by simply specifying K naught itself. In this particular case here, illustrative example, we are going to control the K naught conditions by specifying Poisson's ratio as 0 0.4, 0 0.4, which means that K naught is two thirds or 0 0.667. The overburden stress is controlled by the specified total unit weight. So we need to say what is the total unit weight of the soil. We need a Young's modulus, but the mo Young's modulus we use in an in situ analysis is not all that important. Any realistic value is adequate. Another very important observation is that we need to use effective drained types of parameters because we have pore waters present when we are computing the in situ stresses. In order to get the correct total stresses when we have pore pressures, we have to use the effective drain type of analysis parameters. So with this background and the desired intent here, we can now go to GeoStudio and establish the in situ stress condition for our earthquake analysis. Returning then to GeoStudio and this illustrative example that has been set up for you, there are several things that are worth noting here and inspecting. Number one, we have a water here, the uh, impounded reservoir. We are going to get our pore water pressures from a definition of a water table. And we need to treat the weight of the reservoir water in a special way. So to begin with then, let us look at our material properties. Key in materials. We have the dam embankment material. We have here the effective drained parameters right here. And then we have selected for the in situ analysis, we have selected an elastic plastic constitutive relationship. 
We have set an effective Young's modulus of 10,000 kPa, but as I noted earlier, this value is not all that important. And for the dam embankment material, we have an effective cohesion, cohesion intercept of 20 kPa, a friction angle of 34 degrees, and a unit weight of 18 kilonewtons per meter cubed. And we have specified Poisson's ratio as 0 0.4, and like I noted earlier, we're going to get K0 from our specified Poisson sun's ratio and we have already noted here at the defined stage that k naught will be equal to 0.667. Then we have a surficial crust and the materials are very much the same. Uh, it's just in illustrative purposes that the crust is something that is of the foundation material but the crust itself will not be of a nature that can liquefy or generate excess pore pressure. We have a granular underdrain. And then later on, we're going to talk about the liquefied soil. So just ignore this soil here for the time being. The key material that we are interested in is the foundation material which we have assumed here is loose and potentially liquefiable. So I want to draw your attention here now to this uh, data here. I have checked use steady state strength when liquefied. I will introduce this and talk about this in detail later but for the time being, just accept the fact that we have an undrained steady state strength of 10 kPa and we have a collapsed surface angle, which I briefly mentioned in the introductory presentations, but we're going to, for illustrative purposes here, make this 20 degrees. Notice that I have checked this only for the foundation material. I have not checked it for the superficial crust. I have not checked it for the embankment material and I have not checked it for the granular drain. I've only checked it for the loose foundation soil. Under key in analysis We have selected in situ. We are using sigma here. We have selected as analysis type equal in situ. And we have said that our initial pore water pressures are coming from a, a water table. So at this moment, we have just one analysis, which is an in situ analysis. And we're going to get the initial pore water pressures from the definition of a water table. You should note that because I have defined the water table above the ground surface here, we get this blue shading, which means that there is positive pore water pressure along the ground surface line where the pore pressure is positive. This means that we have to account for the weight of the water in the analysis so we have now the correct pore pressure at the base of the reservoir, so to speak, but we must specifically add a boundary condition that represents the weight of the water. Going then to key in, boundary conditions, we have a reservoir pressure type boundary condition, and notice that we have selected here the stress category and the type is hydrostatic pressure. In order to specify the hydrostatic pressure, we need to specify the surface elevation of the water, which in this case is 12 meters. And for illustrative purposes and easy hand calculated checks, I have set the unit weight of the water to 10 kilonewtons per meter cubed. It just makes it easier to do spot checks 
by hand calculations if I do that. Therefore, we have to apply this boundary condition where the reservoir contacts the structure or the earth and I'm saying this another way where the reservoir causes positive pore pressure on the green ground surface line. In the embankment I have assumed the water table is simply a straight line down to the tip of the granular under drain and then it is at the ground surface out down slope of the embankment. Notice that because we have given the materials a unit weight that we have this cross hatching here. The cross hatching indicates that the self weight of the material will be applied in the analysis. Having done all of that we can now click on the solve icon and resolve this in situ analysis. Clicking on the results icon then, we can look at the results in a variety of different ways. In this particular case here, I am looking at the Y total stresses and you are already likely familiar with how to produce various types of contour plots. And in this particular case, it's of interest to contour the, um, contour the pore water pressure. Contouring the total vertical stress again, just to spot check that we have got reasonable in situ stress conditions. There is, however, one particular plot that I want to draw your attention to in particular, and that is if we say under view preferences, we say show us the liquefaction zone. Liquefaction zone. Let us turn off our contours. And what this is saying to us that we already have a stress state. The shear stress relative to the normal stress is such that we have a small zone here that is at or above the clap surface. In other words, any amount of ground motion could already liquefy this particular little zone under the embankment in the foundation soil. So just jumping ahead once again, if we have our critical state line and we have our clap surface, then we are saying here that this stress state here is something that is on the clap surface or above the clap surface already under static loading conditions. And this is an extremely important step prior to the shaking to take a look at are there any zones where we are already at or above the clap surface, meaning that any amount of ground motion will liquefy this particular zone. We won't spend a lot of time on it here, but another plot that is very useful and we'll come back to later is to plot the QP ratio for this particular case under static conditions. And once again, we see that if we had a QP prime plot, the critical state line, the clap surface, that as my shear stresses increase in this direction, obviously the ratio of Q to P prime increases. So a high, a high Q P prime ratio, which is in this zone here, indicates that I am heading towards the clap surface and wherever I have a zone of high Q prime ratios, 
it infers already before I do the shaking analysis that I have a zone here with some potential liquefaction. So once again I will come back to this in more detail later but this is why I want to reiterate the importance of establishing the correct in situ static stresses because the initial static stresses already begin to tell us a lot about liquefaction potential. It is always a good idea to check the in situ stress results with draw a graph. Very briefly we can say draw a graph and you can do this. I have already done it. We have a vo vertical total stress and the location is in the foundation material under the center of the embankment and I can make a variety of these types of plots of total vertical stress, horizontal stress, both effective and total and pore pressure and it's highly recommended as we've said previously in Sigma presentations that it is necessary to make sure that you get the correct in situ stress state conditions prior to doing any shaking type of analysis. I'm going to leave the in situ part of the analysis at this stage and you can make on your own time some other contour plots or graphs uh, and uh, take your time to do whatever is of interest to you but you know how to do this type of an analysis now and once again I cannot overemphasize the importance of getting a good stress state condition under the static conditions prior to the shaking.